once the teeth become part of their body to grow out of them. And coincidentally or not, I found that the virus I found that has similar properties to the first carnivore and its uh, carnivorous habits of just feeding off of other organisms is uh, the adenovirus I found. So now, one thing about the adenovirus is that it feeds on the components, like I think the plasmic components in the nervous system that allow the creation of things like bone formation. So I think it's possible that bones can contain the messages of the virus inside of them, such as when they're buried in the ground, and stay contaminated as they've been contaminated by the virus in the person as the bones have been growing, and the skeleton in the ground could contain this virus, and it would bind a ghost to the earthly realm, and you would have to burn it because you would have to burn the uh, the virus that's still in the bones. And that's why, like in supernatural TV shows, like they when there's a ghost haunting, they will uh, burn the bones of the ghost, and it won't haunt them anymore. But I'm finding that if that disease has the capacity to actually bind people to the earthly realm, then I would think whatever it targets would be the same component that would provide immortality if it did exist. And I found there were, there's something that happened when I was researching. I watched this documentary about the earliest formations of viruses, and they had necromantic properties, meaning related to necromancy, which what I mean is that they seem to feed off of dead things, and that viruses themselves are more like machines than animals. They don't seem to actually be alive. They seem to be dead. And that makes sense why they're so related to ghosts or uh, separating the connection of the living and the dead. It's because they seem to feed off of uh, if there was a binding material, like in the SCP Foundation of the Story Weavers, the thread that would be used in that story weaving would be like the silk that the adenovirus feeds on. And there are other viruses like cancer and the uh, Dr. Reif video, the documentary I'm going to post in the admin edition, he does describe how a virus does cause cancer, and also that other, vir other diseases, such as other viruses, are typically, or can be also found along with cancer, and, uh, Based on what I found is that viruses seem to be the root cause of every other disease. And which makes sense since they're the smallest. And I'm finding they're very relatable to computers because uh, they're, they seem to not exist on organic material, but electricity. 
which I think electricity might be the medium that is that soap. So like that soap thread of life is electricity. And I think the viruses are like machines in that they run on electricity, just like a machine would. And what I thought so I was going to write where I suspected from watching the documentary yeah, that uh, I saved the footage so I didn't lose it. That viruses, I was listening, listening, listening to uh, the Rife documentary and the Fourth Dimensional book by Rudolf Steiner. And I put two and two together, and also with my notes of two times infinity equals, uh, I think, the fourth dimension. And the second dimension times the fourth dimension equals the third dimension. So meaning that one equation could be used for transcending to a higher dimension, and one could be used to tra to lower into a lower dimension. And the thing with the spirituality, such as with dying, is that when you die, you transcend to a higher dimension. So it would be you transcend from 2D material combined with 4D, which Rudolf Steiner said is movement, or time, I think, he said time, and I perceived that as movement, and with that, it's just like the videos I'm posting in the admin edition, and why they work, it's that it's black and white, the imagery, and it's tilted, so that it's two-dimensional, and also that, uh, which Rudolf Steiner also said that the perspectives, he said something similar to this, like when if you have three values of color, such as like red, blue, and green, or red, blue, and yellow, is that such as used in RGB and computer monitors to simulate color, is that those three different three points of color could map into three dimensions. Whereas if you have two, which is just black and white, it would be two-dimensional or one-dimensional. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, to be honest, if black or white, like if one would count as a color or not, I'm not sure. But the reason that the videos would be able to uh, travel to other realms is because having a lower dimensional form like the videos with the black and white at a tilted angle and pixelated uh, allows it to transcend with its movement to be perceived into a higher dimension and bypass the physical one, which is the third dimension, which is uh, comprehensible by the imagination. And that's why when, when I noticed with the Admin Edition videos that in a still image you wouldn't really be able to see what it is. But when it's moving, you can. So the more movement there is, the more you can identify what shapes are what and what is happening. And it's independent of the sound itself. So I think the sound, the purpose of the sound isn't really to transcend necessarily, but maybe more of just to communicate to the person to better understand the image itself. So, like, the thing is with the video is just that that's just about the image, that's not about the sound. So, 
somehow I do not think that the sub itself, because I've had other videos and it, I don't think other people have had audio that works like that unless they made the video that I wanted to go to other realms. It would have to be that that imagery formed a realm in of itself. And with that, um, like that realm was able to bypass the physical one. So it's somehow with the imagery itself, it the sounds didn't travel to other realms, but somehow the knowledge of the sounds could be ingrained in just the image itself, and that could stay and be carried into other realms. So technically the part that is actually traveling to other realms would be the image, but not the sound. So there's no sound that's being traveled. It's just the image. So somehow, even though there's no way it should really happen, like there's the sound uh, is able to travel, even though technically it shouldn't. Because sound is based on what we know is like three dimensional sort of movement. Or maybe not three-dimensional, but just, it isn't, sound isn't imaginative, it's a physical thing. It's like, it can be accessed and understood in the mind as shapes, and those shapes can be turned into images that are metaphysical, but I don't think words in of themselves are metaphysical, and that's why when you speak it doesn't really do anything. It's when you put your actions from your words. I mean, when you put your words into action, that something happens because words only have value when they're acted upon because sound is only a physical force. So somehow this physical force is able to teleport to other realms, even though, based on like the laws of physics, it shouldn't. So it means that there could be a way to teleport using that method if you studied it further. So what I found with the virus is that I took a guess and said that like, I found that the problems I have, I believe, are controlled by viruses. And uh, also in some of my admin edition videos of the zombies, is that in fiction, it's well known, like, even though they're fiction and used across different types of media, like zombies, they're always described as being caused by a virus, somehow. So, like the zombie virus. And that's basically what a virus is, is a zombie virus. Like, viruses in of themselves are zombies, in a way. Or at least they hijack organic components to endorse zombification, meaning that they actually make your body cannibalize itself and somehow teleport your own bodily resources and energy into another realm using that method I described like a few couple minutes ago to actually transport your own nutrients into the realm of the old god to rebuild itself and its body. And that's why I described it as a wall of flesh. It's because all of the flesh is from all of the diseases that are taking it from people. And it is horrifying, but since it's been identified, 
in the description to start. And what I found is that uh, the reason I looked at the picture of viruses and I felt very, I've studied magic and I have spent years channeling with physical objects and materials to understand what they feel like and their nature is and with all the right thing I've known in the past um, such as for what the parasites I've had and also for other like fun little things in Canada is that I, uh, I'm very sensitive to electromagnetic frequencies and uh, that makes me more sensitive to objects like crystals or metals but it also means that I can learn more from them. And also, I have the ability to even feel like the presence of those things just by looking at pictures of them. And uh, I looked at the pictures of viruses, like to pick which one that I would write for since I only I'm detoxing from life and for cancer uh, recently, like yesterday and the day before. And uh, the viruses. I was deciding which one based on the pictures that I felt like I should write for. And uh, I noticed with the Adena virus that it had a shape to it that I actually made a clay sculpture of before, even though I had no idea what the Adena virus was, and I never saw it before. And I noticed it also looks very similar to the C60, like the carbon uh, material that I've been looking for in my uh, the rebirth chamber I'm studying to eventually build using the material of the Shanghai. So what I proposed is that if you use these C60 elements while having no diseases present in your body, that if you had a large enough mass of it, that you could hypothetically respawn your body inside of it if you died. And I wanted to build one. And uh, what I found with the viruses is that I picked, I found the pictures of them. I noticed that one thing I wrote about in one of my videos before was just a fictional narrative of an SCP anomaly I made on my own. It was this white fuzzy ball which is described as eating people and disguising itself as common household objects such as furniture and uh, it being like fuzzy looking like a carpet and white like a white ball and it's very large and it's, uh, it has long like threads like a hamster ball, like when it's rolled up. Or not a hamster ball, I mean like a uh, porcupine when it's rolled up, except it's not uh, like sharp edges, they're like carpet. And I found that there's this virus that looked exactly like it. And, and it was in the documentary I watched, and it acted like a poof, a poof ball, like a fuzzy ball that, uh, like the ones my cats, the toys they would have, and it's like bites and play with, uh, is that those viruses would drop onto balls, supposedly, based on what I've seen the footage of and just 
just like stick around and slide in your nervous system, your, your DNA. So typically I think the viruses target your DNA. And that's the problem is that they're small. Uh, some of the viruses, or maybe all of them, but I know some of them are smaller than DNA and they can infect your DNA. So it's like when you see like a moldy piece of food, like that's what your DNA could look like with these viruses. And uh, sort of like when I saw straight up DNA, it also reminded me of the Tron with the stick, how it was used with the, the hover bike. It reminded me of that, like it would be related, sort of like a plasma tube, which is what I use for the Rife machine with the MOPA. And the, uh, hold on. Uh, I noticed that correlation with the story I wrote with uh, the SCP I made, the white fuzzball, and, uh, Typically, like, I wrote they would hang around your bed where you sleep and devour you while you're sleeping. And something I... I noticed that they looked like the vi one of these viruses. I forgot the name, but I think they're in the documentary. But, uh... So it's, uh... There were other viruses, and the one I picked, based on the, like, the structure of it, that looks like a... It looks like beads. It was made of beads. And I thought that looks like a... It looks almost subatomic, like, you know, what an atom looks like with sort of like the beads. It looks like that, except a cluster of them into a ball. And it has like these ridges on like the sides of like, I think maybe like at four angles, I'm not sure, of like up, down, left, and right, and forward, and back. So like six degrees, maybe, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm very tired and it's late, so I might not be completely correct, but as, uh, I know that beads like that are very, like, that's the imagery I always had of electromagnetic elements, like, uh, atoms in electromagnetic fields is them having bead-like, uh, like shapes and maybe movement, you know, like, uh, the Newton's cradle that bounces back and forth. And the virus looks like that. And I thought that that looks like out of all the ones I've seen, the one I would pick to write for, but I'm not sure what it is. And I also have this idea of, uh, I'm going to say which one it was, if it was the Adeno virus. Is that I also have the idea that uh, the smallest virus would be the one that is the root virus for every other disease. And the reason I thought that was because I've seen Dr. Rachel and she has a biofeedback machine that reads the frequencies that are emitted from diseases to detect if they're there. It's the thing with viruses is that they're not alive, so they wouldn't emit frequencies, so they would be undetectable. And that's why the cure for cancer, like without Dr. Reif, is still not definitively found even though there's, they have radiation therapy and things like that. Uh, 
Dr. Reif actually was able to cure it. But, um, it's weird, my thoughts feel like they're being blocked. I feel like something very strongly trying to block my thoughts with this. Like, it's not like I forgot, like, it's some, my mind suddenly went blank for no apparent reason. And as a. Uh, hold on. So, this is about to be cancer in my thing, and as a. Uh, is literally empty right now, and I have no idea why. Cancer, virus, virus, rifling. Obviously, I'm not going to stop. I'm just, and this has happened many times when I've been making these videos. Of something or someone actively stopping me from displaying this content and actively trying to sabotage what I'm doing so I don't post these videos. It's been happening for uh, about a month now. And it's been most aggressive in the past two weeks, a week and a half, week and a half maybe. And so, anyways, if I, I know it, so I don't have to memorize it. So it's, uh, the virus is treatable, it's very small, so it wouldn't be detected with the biofeedback machine. So, because it detects the frequencies of it, and it's so, uh, and if it is a dead thing, that's why Dr. Rife had to use a powerful microscope to detect it, was he had to see it visibly, because it was so small, and even if it did emit frequencies, even if it did, it might be too small for it to be detected with the biofeedback machine anyways. So, I thought with Dr. Rachel, I didn't have these viruses because it would have detected it. But I found out today that supposedly these viruses aren't... They're not really... Uh, I don't know if they're organic or not. I don't really know what they are. Based on what I know with the characteristics, they're like machines, but... It's, they still get destroyed with the vibrations, but it's, they don't act like, uh, they act like machines because they're not trying to, uh, like, eat. That's what's weird about them, and that's why it goes with the idea of the old god, is that they don't seem to be actually eating anything, like, if you have like worms or a fungus or something, they draw nutrients like to eat it. But with viruses, they seem to be like they don't eat it. They just it's like a ant colony with the queen. It's like they just bring it to the queen, but they don't do anything with it themselves. And that's what's weird about it. Also, something I was going to mention that was almost not is that uh, the earlier video I mentioned of the organism, the earliest carnivore, I noted how it would decapitate its victims. So, like, it would bite down and separate its head from the rest of the body. So it always would decapitate them. And uh, I 
Lord Solaris that an attack on Titan that the leap of the neck was where it's this anime that I strongly uh, it means a great deal to me. It has gotten gotten me through many times and I can post clips of it later. Is that the characters have the ability to transform it. Some of the characters, characters have the ability to transform into titans. And when they transform, their human form is inside the nape of the neck of the titan. And it seems like, for some reason, these carnivores are targeting like the spinal cord, which is what I think is like, the reason they target bones isn't specifically for like any bone in the body, but specifically the spinal cord. So hypothetically, what would buy the skeleton to the mortal realm to be a ghost would be the spinal cord of the ghost. And uh I noticed how like the carnivore would crush around the neck of its victims, I think. Which is where the name is in a human. So somehow uh like the carnivore its tactic is to separate the head from the body, but I also noticed the same characteristic in diseases like viruses and that they separate the mind from the body which is what it can mean in today's terms they want you to be sitting in fear and delirious and confused about all the possibilities of reality but physically not doing anything about it. And you could say that's what fear is. Is really what they feed on isn't the concept of fear. It's the inactive state of not doing anything at all. Because ironically, that what feeds them or at least they take from people and give to their queen is uh, electricity. And electricity is uh, ironically what kills them, just like with the rife machine. So somehow the very thing they need is also what kills them. And I think that's what could seem as viruses seemingly uh, having no purpose in the form people can actually be a certain level of uh, ancient knowledge that we're unaware of. So it's like by all of the books and lectures of Rudolf Steiner about the spiritual realm, even though I didn't read most of them, I did learn, I think, the most important point of it, which is that there is all of this knowledge of these other realms that nobody really knows about, or not knows about, but acknowledges. I say nobody, not literally nobody, but that most people in the world don't. And it's like there are all of these other realms that exist and all these possibilities of knowledge, but we don't really see it anywhere. And I think that the problem of uh, the complacency of modern society now, of just sitting inside and not doing anything, is that in of itself isn't wrong. It's when uh, 
basically when uh, everybody is doing that. So it's, like, it's fine if most people do that, but if literally everybody does that, then nobody does anything. Obviously, what would be best is that everybody is actively doing something to stop these, uh, this old god. What I mean in society now, based on what I've seen, is that nobody is acknowledging it as a real entity. It's like that's why I started posting these videos, is because the idea of other people speaking against this old god and acknowledging it as a real thing and being the queen of these diseases such as viruses and things that if killed could kill off every disease on the planet if you were to do so nobody is acknowledging that i've never heard anybody mention anything even similar to that in my entire life and that's why i'm posting these videos it's because the knowledge needs to exist and that's why I started doing that. And ever since I did, I felt like something was targeting me because it knew I was dangerous. And it, uh, with the viruses, I had two separate things where I picked the picture of the virus and I decided which one I would write for based on that picture. And I also knew ahead of time that I would probably pick, also pick the smallest one. And it was the adenovirus. And it's like, what is the adenovirus? And the thing is with that is that it wasn't discovered until after Dr. Reif retired. So like in the 1950s or 60s. So it's like, that's when it was discovered and it's the smallest virus it's like 20 20 to 30 nanometers or something it's smaller than dna in the human body it is very small and it looks like a cluster of beads so like in a circular or a spherical prism with studs on the sides, like a landmine. And, uh, see. I assumed based on their structure, they look very similar to C60. Not similar to like they were the same thing, but that they were at the same, uh, scale as in the level like some diseases are like thousands of times larger than other ones but based on what the the appearance of them it looks like to me like they would interact with each other and the thing is with the uh, with the virus I thought that obviously use the rife machine to write for the adenovirus but something I wanted to say was that with the adenovirus is that I think what makes it so difficult is that it can corrupt DNA so I refer to the old god corrupting nature 
is that nature is in an apocalyptic state, even if the world itself isn't. I think nature is. So if you like were in the house all day, you only went out at like dawn and dusk and night away from the radiation. Uh, like people don't say there is radiation outside, but I'm saying it to you because there is a high amount of radiation enough to contribute to cellular atrophy, even if people don't like have to wear hazmat suits or anything, like you wouldn't think that that would be happening. You would just notice very high amounts of cancer and uh, weather, extreme weather changes very suddenly, which does happen. It's like there's a very high amount of cancer in the United States and other parts of the world right now. It's one of the leading causes of death. And I'm hoping that posting the documentary on Royal Rife will help with that because I know it does cure cancer, even though it has been vilified. And uh, much of the information on it on Google, just the search browser on the internet is uh, censored, is like, there are, I've seen studies they've done on the Rife machine that says it isn't very effective at doing anything, even though in the same article it says that they didn't use the same frequencies that Dr. Rife did in his experiment. So that could be any frequency, like you have no idea what it is. And it wasn't done at a nearly high enough power level to really do anything in the first place. So it seems self-sabotage in a way. Like it was, it obviously wouldn't do anything. And, uh, and it's just for some reason people don't talk about it. It's like in the US, like I, we, my family got a rife machine for $2,000, which is like in today's money, that's like, that's really cheap. That's like a car is like $5,000. Like a low budget car is five thousand dollars. And it's the Volpa, the accessory that makes it so powerful that's like it uses a plasma tube that's so powerful it can actually produce frequencies through walls. Which is what I use to rife. And as uh I used to use these metal rods, but my mom got the MOPA because she rides too. And uh, that's only like 600-ish dollars or 700 as an accessory. So for $2,700, you get all of the rife equipment. And the cancer industry has like billions and billions of dollars that they get. It's one of the most expensive uh, industries because of how expensive cancer treatment is. And the people who run those companies are people who would be like, if they knew this worked, they would try to censor it so they can make more money. Like corporate, corporate greed is a real thing that is going on very strongly, especially in the healthcare community which like there's pharmaceutical companies will intentionally make patients addicted to medication so that they pay more money and intentionally make it so that they have negative side effects in their medication uh, if they withdraw from it so that they don't and keep buying more. And it's pretty horrible with what they do with the healthcare system now. It's like people now are less healthy than they used to be in like the 1950s or whatever. It's like most people now are chronically ill and spend almost their entire day just sitting down inside the house. And even though they have all of this access to technology, 
with these computers and everything. Um, I was scanned to try to find a way to endorse going out in nature, but that's how I found out it was corrupted. And that's why I'm saying you shouldn't go outside right now because of the mass of uh, parasitical diseases even in the trees and the clay that spreads through the atmosphere. And the public is more prominent now because of the ozone layer uh, slightly dis or not slightly but dissipating because of the pollution which is caused by the overpopulation in the world. And the ozone layer does actually grow back. So when there was the COVID-19 pandemic, then, uh, then people were expected to be indoors for like a period of like a year or, some, year or two. It's like most people had to like, they had to wear masks when they went out and they had to stay indoors. You know, if they were infected, they had to be inside the house for like two weeks and be quarantined. And so that went on for a long time. And uh, it's like a, the rife machine, they actually do have frequencies to cure the COVID vaccine, which I did use. Not the COVID vaccine, just COVID. And which is a strain of the coronavirus. And it does work, and I did write for it, and it actually did remove that from me. And I got it a couple of times, and I was actively feeling it in my system, and I arrived for it, and I actually felt it going out of my system because of how much that the Rife machine actually worked on that. And um, they came out with the COVID vaccine, and I felt that, I don't know if I can really say I'm anti-vax, I don't know enough about it, but I definitely wouldn't have gotten the COVID vaccine, which the government tried to mandate that, as make it mandatory, but I was able to get a, find a doctor who didn't agree with that and exempt me from it. So I didn't get the vaccine and I never got COVID after that. And later it was found that the COVID vaccine didn't reduce the amount of infections in COVID. So it, it was rushed so much, so much in its development that it wasn't really fit for human testing yet, but they rushed it out anyways because they could make more money. And they had a couple different vaccines for it, but all of them seemed to lead to more autoimmune conditions. And I was like, I'm not risking that. I'd rather get COVID than these autoimmune conditions. And if I get COVID, I can write for it. And um, I didn't get COVID again. It's just like people are so, there's so much knowledge on the internet, but so much of it is wrong that it's not like an age of knowledge. It's an age of uh, misunderstanding is what it is. It would be better if people uh, probably didn't have the internet really is a uh, meaning like I could say that I'm using these videos with the internet but I mean like for other people aside from this project I'm doing with society functioning without posting these videos that uh, there's so much wrong information that it's keeping people from being on track to actually finding a way to stop this to begin with. I found the best thing to do is not to seek criticism, 
not to like ask people for help. It's not to look for other people's advice. It's to find a way to do my own research based on my own experiences. And I actually did learn that from reading Rudolf Steiner. It's that it's like if he could do all these things, it's like that's like I'm not going to read his books because I'm going to find a way to do my own research. And when I did, I kept going back to Rudolf Steiner just to read for like an hour or something. And I found that everything he said was actually true based on what I felt. So it's like every time I went back to see if like maybe Rudolf Steiner was wrong, I don't know. Is that it actually wasn't. I didn't find anything he said to be wrong based on what I found. And then so I used it to, like the first thing I read was about the fourth dimension and about comprehending it. And I used that in my research to learn about the different dimensions. And with that, I was able to actually learn about time travel and uh, lead to the ideas that led to me being able to make these videos. And anyway, I probably missed with, I was going to say something, but I changed the topic with that. Like the coronavirus and the right thing is, uh, I did, I remember I was going blind, and I did actually use the Rife machine to treat myself with it for these different diseases, and it actually did cure my blindness from that. And it's like it did actually work. So as a, my brother doesn't believe in that, but he, he's, he's an atheist, as I'm not, like he, that's not like why I'm saying like I'm vilifying you, I'm just saying like he's from a different background. Even though we are related, we are very different people and believe in very different things. And he doesn't really care about any of these things at all. And uh, doesn't really believe in uh, any of this, like the Rife machine works or anything. But no one actively, like in the physical world, like around me, like no one actually, like, does anything about it at all. I'm the only person doing it. And uh, I've looked everywhere, like all across different countries and the internet and everything. I haven't found anyone do anything about this at all. It's like communicating with other realms, with uh, developing the Rife machine further, you know, which was like spying us using it on crops agriculture and that's when I used it on the mushrooms is that I rifed I had the idea that instead of using pesticides whatever to uh, cure the crops uh, or not pesticides I mean like the chemicals to remove pesticides or parasites that I could rife them and also to improve their health. And I did that on the mushrooms. And that's how I found out with doing that, that I realized mushrooms are actually parasites. And uh, I did hear like the sound they make. It's like these, like, kind of like snake heads, except they don't have eyes. Like I'd see images of them, of like, pink creatures and like all these tendrils and kind of like tentacles in a way but with heads and uh it's like sometimes i imagine them being like black tar and sometimes i imagine them being like pink worm-like things which viruses also do have those same tendrils on them and I think that viruses, their root source is the same thing as these disgusting parasites. 
I felt by experimenting with collecting wood and clay that these materials are infested with parasites somehow. Just clay outside and wood, like trees. So it's like I, now I'm trying to eat crops that aren't collected from trees. And somehow a parasite, like large masses of parasites, are coming from outer space onto the earth. So these things, what I think makes them so surreal, is that I think they're aliens. So it's like, they're actually extraterrestrial terrestrial beings. So it's like they're from outer space. They're not like, it's like a hive mind, but the hive mind itself isn't pure instinct. It's a single sentient being, which is the old god. So they're just like mediums for the old god itself, which is like a giant eye. So like what I refer to as the purple moon in the story of Purple RB, the moon is the eye, and the eye is the corpse of the arcane of humanity that the old god is trying to use necromancy to bring back to life and bring its own soul back into it to become god of the earth. Yes, that's what nature is. Like mother nature is the devil. That's what I found. That mother nature and the devil are the same thing. And that, uh, I've learned that magic exists separate from nature. It's that many things such as like witchcraft and magic and God and even Satan are separate and different things than the devil. So Satan and the devil are not the same thing. One is an intelligent being, an like angelic being, that was best friends with God, but betrayed God. And the other is the old God. So what happened was, uh, God, Satan, and the devil, that you might think Satan and the devil are working together but what's really happening is that they have three separate objectives. Is that God and Satan, neither of them wants the old God to exist and wants it to die, but they have very different ideologies on how to do it and what the world will look like after that is done. So the ideas of hypothetically like Satanism is, I'm not a Satanist, I'm just saying, are based on a, I think a person's perception of Satan, but it actually is through the lens of the old God. So it's like we, and the perception of a modern person trying to view God is through the lens of, I mean, through the real God, is through the lens of the old God. So it's like everything we try to do just keeps coming through the lens of the old God. So it's like how do you solve that? It's by not having power is how. And that's what the Bible teaches is that you don't have power. God does. You give your power and will to God or direct it for God because God can do something. And the point is that you now are too sick and it would take too long to teach you everything about the old God and the spiritual world now for you to figure it out yourself so it would be faster, more efficient, and uh, 
God believes that you owe him to do this as your creator is that you immediately just say, I will do what you say, and not try to live my own life. And naturally by doing that, I think people will live lives that naturally will lead to the defeat of this old God. But uh, you might not never know about it. And I feel like I wouldn't have known about it, all these truths, if I didn't run away from God. Because I wanted to be, I would say, the fourth corner of the world. And not just be part of the trilogy. Is that I wanted to be my own person. And that neither God nor Satan or the devil. But the mistake I made was that I thought Satan and the devil were the same person. And because of that, you know, is that I didn't know who I was fighting. And with that, it's like, I actually think how the old God is so powerful that I think Satan has actually changed their mind about what they actually want. So I think for thousands of years, I think Satan's goal was to destroy humanity because Satan thought that humanity was too far gone. And God thought there was still hope. So Satan's idea is that if this old God uses people as a medium, why don't we just kill all of them? And God was like, we need to let them find a way to do this to restore hope for humanity that this darkness can be defeated. But now the old God, I think, is so powerful as sitting at the throne of God of the physical earthly realm that the mortal living beings are inhabiting. The physical three-dimensional world is that I think Satan is actually changing their view on it. On actually prioritizing defeating this old God over battling God. And I think that's why the realms are begin beginning to merge with heaven and hell. Is that Satan of hell and God of heaven are starting to intertwine into connecting to the living realm here to reveal not only the defeat of the old God, but also the possibility of immortality. And before I go to bed, because it's very late, is that uh, I spent a very long time fighting these spiritual battles. And it's, uh, I'm 21 and a half years old. But I feel like I'm a hundred. You know, my perception of time is much slower than most people's. And because of that, I think, if, is that I feel much older. And part of that is me not giving up, but realizing that, uh, I think I'm realizing now that many of the things in my life that I thought were important is that it's not that they aren't, it's that the, having those things in my life is not the fastest way to defeating this old God. And that is living a normal life. It is, uh, buying little knickknacks and things that I like. It's really about, the, now it's about the pure efficiency of the startling reality that immortality is a natural state. That that means that there's this major being preventing us from being that. Just from us existing and being mortal. And that is something we need to deal with. 
now. And it's more important than anything else we can do, I think, is to defeat this old guy. And whatever squabbles that people have after this is will be much better, I think, than having this old god here. Because it's a horrifying, terrifying being. And I've seen what it looks like. And it is the devil. It is the planet eating the worm that wants to consume the entire universe to become a god itself. If you imagine the worst per possible person imaginable being God over everything you know, is that's exactly what would happen if this old God would win. And uh, what I was going to say was the if I had to sleep, I probably need to be asleep too, is that Pinky is asleep. Is that with the adenovirus, is that I found with the carbon exchange with the fungite seems to lead to some solidification of something in the nervous system that of some formation of something. And it's a, what I mean by that is I noticed the past few days that my skin is a... Uh, I might... It feels much more like rubber than like skin. And I've noticed it happening more recently. Is that uh, I'm actually noticing some very slight physiological changes. Such as like, I can be exhausted. Like, I feel like I'm collapsed and like I can't get up. And a second later, I would have gotten up and left the room like that quickly. And it's like my body can just immediately recover from trauma. And uh, like I just have energy, uh, even though I don't have my body isn't able to recover properly because of the diseases I'm still arriving for. I can just uh, stand up all day and even when I'm going to sleep, I can just wake up immediately, get out of bed immediately. And when I'm sitting in bed to go to sleep, I don't feel any difference than when I'm wide awake and I just fall asleep suddenly. And it's, uh, and all I need is just some, um, vegetables and, like, a couple of fruits and corn and Ezekiel bread. And so that's it. So it's, uh, I have added some, like, seaweed and Irish sea moss for the minerals and gut bacteria, but I don't have caffeine and I don't do drugs, I don't drink, I just drink water. It's like, this energy is coming from something, and it doesn't seem to be changing even when I change the foods in my diet. And I've ordered more fungi to put on the walls, and when I have it, I feel the same presence I feel when I watch the Infinity Blade, like the videos I have is I feel it more uh, when I have the shungai. And the carbon, I think, is used to uh, when I see like uh, black and white screens, not black and white, like binary color, like the videos I have, like this one, but black and white, like gray scale on a TV. I think and feel the same way as when I'm 
with the presence of the Shungite. Hence the problem with it is that it's only in Russia and the Russian mind. And I didn't like the idea of having a mineral that's so hard to access with it, like, not being exposed to you, like, really anywhere unless you intentionally buy it. But at the same time, uh, it seems like it's doing something, and I feel like it is working. And I feel like with the carbon inside of it, it can harmonize with the carbon inside a person and physically kill off these viruses just by being near it. And I remember when like, I looked at pictures of viruses with the shungite in the room, and looking at the picture of the white fuzzball, I felt the same way as when I was rifling, by just looking at a picture of it in the room with the shungite. And it has C60, so it's like a polyacon chip, something made of carbon. And then it's very similar to the carbon structure it's found in diamond. Which is why I found it in the first place. And you can make diamond by radiation with graphite, or uh, crushing diamonds. Like that, you can make diamonds in labs. But it's I can tell the difference between the lab grown diamonds and one from the ground. It feels I would prefer one from the ground than a lab, but a diamond is still a diamond. As a, my mom used to have one, but it fell out, so she lost it, and she got a fake one instead, so. Around that time was like the same time as like I started having psychic connections with uh, possibly other people as when that happened. Like it felt like it diminished when the diamond was lost. And I think she lost it. I got a different place, not somewhere in my house. And, uh, this carbon seems to be working with whatever it's doing. And I'm researching about making a physical place for manifesting energy into physical matter, which would be the human arcane. So, like, your spirit or consciousness that could turn the carbon, like the presence it produces, to create like a metaphysical black hole that you could respawn into when you die. And I think you can use it to cure diseases, but I also think that since diseases feed on immortal energy, is that if you can cure a disease, with these frequencies or materials. They could also be used to regenerate or create life as well. So if you don't have any diseases, but you still use those frequencies like for life or with the shungites and the materials, I think they, would, they wouldn't do nothing they would regenerate and rebuild yourself into something else, such as inorganic material. Because now I'm researching about the possibility of there being an enlightenment to health, such as if you were able to not have any diseases, that you begin to transform into a different material that is inorganic is that would be something that is similar to diamond and its properties. So like a human being made of metal. So like, I don't think it is human beings would be made of crystal, but 
but maybe you need an iron that has some more properties to the diamond, which would be something like steel, because it's made with carbon. So, which steel is used in skyscrapers, especially in like Tokyo, which there is a high amount of earthquakes, so they have large amounts of metal in them to withstand from those earthquakes. And also, countries like South Korea and Japan are near the Shanghai line, I think, in Russia. Since it's on like the eastern side of Russia. So they're actually close to that. And I'm thinking maybe there are multiple reasons why I'm drawn to that place. And I can post videos later about that. But now I need to go to bed. If I didn't mention something, I will probably remember it and post it later. But I really need to go to bed. And, uh, and based on what I've seen today and research so far, I do believe immortality is possible. Just the question is, will it be attained in time, I think. Because the thing is, is that, uh, I think that, uh, with how God is, it's not that I'm rebelling against God, it's that I think I'm willing to do things, go to certain lengths to, uh, do things that God wouldn't want me to do. And I think that's how I was able to uncover about the old God, when God, when the real God didn't want me to ever know about that in the first place, to shelter me from that. Well, I see it as more of a necessity. And, uh, and the thing is with me, I'm not trying to uncover God as being a villain or something, I'm just saying that it's a situation that's hard to say who is right or not. Because what I did might work, but also people might not like what I did. But also they might not like it because they would have done the same thing. And it's, I don't know. It's a very difficult situation. But it's, uh, I think that God wouldn't want someone to have to invent immortality. I don't think God would ever want someone to do that. But I also would do that. And that's why we're different, is that God wouldn't want to create a world where someone would have to go through so much difficulty to come to that invention just to have something that God wants to have them already and give to them. But I would think that I would consider that to be uh, necessary for mankind. And so that's why we're different. Is that I see it as a necessity and not a point of morality, but of me saying, this is what we need to do. And it's only natural. So I'm going to end the video here, and I will see you later. Have a good night. Uh, stand up so far. Bye. So I wanted to say that I think I've been just from writing for the Adeno virus like a couple hours ago. I'm getting, getting cramps on my body, and I haven't got, got some cramps for like, uh, really any for like a year at least. And I think it's because of the increased levels of oxygen. And I was going to say before, and I didn't come to it yet, that I think the, uh, the adenovirus feeds on oxygen. 
That's what I was going to say. And, uh, I know this oxygen and carbon monoxide does put people to sleep. And obviously one is better than the other in doing that. And that going to sleep with carbon monoxide is probably dangerous. But with oxygen, it's more like a steaming shower. Makes you sleepy. Whereas, uh, I'm thinking that it seems like the reason that happens is because sleep is connected to a core element that has to do with the exchange of oxygen and carbon monoxide but isn't necessarily one of them in of itself. So that's the same components that makes people go to sleep and actually regenerate from sleep. Which if someone was Im had immortality, they wouldn't need to sleep or dream, I think. Then, um, then that person would, uh, That component would be uh, what's targeted by the adenovirus, but would be used for, like, it'd be like a mirror, in a way. I like, it like the canvas and the easel of like an image on the painting of a whatever. Something I mentioned earlier, but I didn't record it. It's like a... Someone would probably know what that means, because I talked to someone about it. It's a... It's that that exchange would be like the canvas is the carbon monoxide. The material on it to make the drawing is the uh, the oxygen. So it's like somehow with stories, like story weaving, is like not just the carbon monoxide coming out when you talk, but also the oxygen you breathe in. And that exchange leads to sleep. So it's not actually one or the other that leads to sleep and regeneration or immortality in a way with that connection to life. It's, uh, it's both, you know, ideally at the same time. It's like, how do you get both at the same time? is you get oxygen with carbon, which is, um, I saw iron, which is at the core of the earth, and binds the dead to the mortal realm, is the, uh, is associated with oxygen, and shungite is associated with, or diamond, with carbon, so carbon monoxide and uh, the exchange would be masculinity and femininity, whatever, which is represented by marriage. I think so. It's like the knight has the iron sword, the princess has the uh, diamonds jewels. So it's like that's the comparison. It's like, it's not necessarily male is masculine and female is feminine, whatever, but marriage does represent that. It's like a, it just, all of those together somehow. So you can figure that out. I'm about to pass out and uh, have fun with that. And good night. I 
and my dad's about to go to sleep, so I uh, just the uh, next morning and then I'm gonna go back to bed because I'm so tired to go to work right. And uh, I have a couple of materials I'm studying now with the rebirth chamber. It's at the shrink I ordered actually has quartz inside of it and also iron or pyrite, which is a type of iron that is also called fool's gold because it can look like gold, but it's actually iron. And it's unique because of its cubular structure, like pixels on a screen. And I'm going to have I think this first picture might not have actually been a uh, crap. It was a uh, uh, trunk guide, but I wanted to include it if I mislabeled them because that would be important for uh, some elements that my body is trying to recognize it as. And if it can't tell the difference, it could be that. The element that is needed in the human body is the same element. So, even though I'm saying labeling it, what could be interpreted as a mistake, is really me uh, trying to say, or my body trying to say and recognize, that it's the same thing to me. So, I'm going to include another picture with uh, the Shungite. One picture with the Shungite cube, and the next picture with Iron Meteorite, which I also found to be very effective in killing off these diseases and the old god. So I'll include one first picture after this clip of a Shungite cube, and then, uh, I said it already, but, uh, Iron Meteorite. And I have a little tiny piece, but it's it's like the most powerful metal or crystal or anything, just mineral that's that with its vibrational energies. So it's the one that I researched for months about of like, should I expose myself to this or not? Because uh, there's this music video called Machine Hearts where they have a cube and hold it and I recognize that I'll post it separately I could do it after this video of uh they hold a cube and that cube to me represented iron 
meteorite, and I recognize it by its unique uh, patterns that resemble, I think, the Jewish symbol with the lines that naturally form during its immense heating process in space. So, I have my Shungite collection so far. It's like, it's, it's not big, but it's heavy, dense. The mass itself produces more of the effect than the size, I think. And uh, unless if there's like plating, which I'm ordering plating for the walls, but it's like $50 a cube. So it's like a, I'm working my way up to that. And it's the only thing I'm buying right now is chunkite to ward off the radiation from outside because it absorbs radiation and EMF electromagnetic frequencies like from phones and electronics and uh, maybe UV rays, which I'm guessing is the radiation where it's coming from. And it converts it, I think, into metaphysical positive energy. So it absorbs negative energy and is able to convert it into positive energy. And at first when I got it, I got visions of a planet eating worm. That's like, I feel like I shouldn't uh, get this. But then I realized that the immense amount of like fearful thoughts I was feeling might have been like a presence it was warding off that that presence was trying to shake me off of this path I was on with getting the Shanghai. And, uh, it's, it's called a, some, some people call it a crystal, uh, because of the high amount of carbon, or the six, C60. So it's unique because it is I would classify it as metal. It looks and feels like a metal, but apparently it's also crystalline. So it's unique in that. And it's only found in this, these, uh, a couple of Russian mines in the eastern side of them, but they do sell them. And I feel like this is the cheapest they're going to be. So I'm making sure to stock up on them. And I would prioritize them over the iron, personally, because it protects from the outside world. All the iron, I think, provides energy into the internal being. It doesn't necessarily bore off from outside presences. So, I also have this drawing I'm going to sell. Is a, I drew this with the pen drawing is like my interpretation of some of the things I've seen in the dream world ultimately sideways. I only drew a couple of drawings in the past few months, but I just felt I spent like all two days, full days drawing this, and I just felt like I'd move on to something else. And it's like a... That's Kirby Lurby eating something. I know it's backwards, but I'll mirror this video. And uh... Which you wouldn't be able to tell. When I watched these drawings I made, I noticed the similarities between the dark thoughts I had from being surrounded with nature and, uh, it made me realize that some form of consciousness is existing that seems to be from outer space. I've noticed a lot of space-like qualities, but that shouldn't exist on Earth, because Earth should be Earth. It shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't 
feel like you're in space on Earth. Like, that's what a planet is. It's, it's not space. It has an atmosphere. And the fact that these diseases, like the viruses, seem reminiscent of, like, space-related beings, of, like, the presence they have, like, the same presence you would feel out in outer space, and uh, characteristics that seem alien to, to earthly life. It seems like the, uh, this is the root cause it's from space. And I said that the radiation, I think, is coming from Mercury, which isn't the sun itself, but the Mercury is closest to the sun, or close, much closer to the sun, at least, than, uh, I forgot, than, uh, Earth. So, much of the year, it would be, Mercury would be in front of the sun, from the Earth's perspective, and I think it could be interpreted as the radiation coming from the sun, but I think it would be from Mercury. And I'm going to study that more, and I think Rudolf Steiner actually has uh, books about the different planets. And I found that, uh, I think Mercury is where the Hell realm is. So the Doom video I'm posting is like, there are the realms of the Earth, I think, were shattered and scattered away from the earthly sphere and became attached to other planets. And the problem with that is that that means something on a different planet could physically cause things with a planet consciousness on Earth. In the sense that the dwarf planet, the dwarf planet Ceres, has this massive blue lemon, blue luminescent light that I noticed is uh, when I studied magic of these blue lights regularly showing up and there are, there are toxic clay mounds in those blue lights and people, scientists are trying to determine if they're from the salt in it or the clay but I found that iodine seems to kill off this substance, which is why I integrated seaweed into my diet. And uh, I think somehow these beings can latch onto color. So like that's why I started the black and white experiments again, which I did it months ago, but I stopped and I'm doing it again, and I wrote about it in my book that I can maybe read some of later, The Boy Who Became God. And it's, uh, it's 250 pages long. It's, uh, but I didn't want to publish it because I feel like, uh, I feel, I'll post the videos, but I won't publish it because I feel like, uh, it, is it something that should be misinterpreted? Otherwise, it maybe, I don't know. But I'll read, I think, some of it later. And, uh, this is, yes, this is still for the SCP Foundation. So it's not like I'm stopping that. I'm just getting ideas for that. But obviously, like the book, I'm going to read that. I don't know about all of it, but. I'll, I could try to post pictures of it, at least, but as a... <clears throat> I wrote on the back of this, I'm still really tired, by the way, so it's like, I'm still thinking, is that the associated uh, title of pen markings on canvas, Herpilerpy enters the earth through the medium of the dark forest, I drew this March 16th, 17th, and 18th. Leah Mahoney questioned your reality. Always be honest to yourself. At 
treasure hoard, which is my Etsy shop, where I get money for the Shanghai. Question for the day. Are nuts, we all ghosts, fading, looking for immortal bodies? Are we naive to give up on the idea of immortality? I want to help. And then I have another one that I drew, but I only have two. Drew this. So this was inspired, I'll get right back to this, from this pin I got at a vinyl record store that when I was 14, I, my brother and my dad went, and I went along with them, even though I didn't really care about buying anything. As I found this pin, it stood out to me. Since thick. And it stood out to me. It's made of aluminum with a copper pin on the back. And when I saw this, I just, it felt like this would impact me for the rest of my life for some reason. And I always kept it around somewhere, and it's one of the few possessions I've always had somehow, even though most of my other, other things seem to disappear over time. I had this picture that I drew with a pen, and I'm left-handed, by the way, is that I this was the first drawing I drew in months. I just started drawing this. And... Uh, it says popular bead and think. So I always had this image of this eye throughout my childhood and teenage years. And... got visions of it as I've been doing this research and to think it was God or it resembled God but over time I think I realized it wasn't it was the old God and I had the idea th throughout my life that the old God wanted to use me as, and I think just the idea of it at least, wanted to use me as a vessel for the old god in human form. So like what, what would be called the Antichrist. And I spent my life resisting these ideas of submitting to what I thought was God, but it turned out to be the old God, disguised as the Christian God. And I found out the whole time, you know, with great reluctance, that I was actually doing exactly what the Christian God wanted me to do, even though I thought I was disobeying him. And that's why it's a very confusing relationship with me. And, uh, it also says on the back, March 16th, 2023, see you in your dreams, purple be the dream monster from the purple moon by Liam Mahoney at Treasure Horrid. I put Horrid, not like a horde of gold, but H-O-R-R-O-R-E-D. And, uh, I think I need to uh, go to bed, you know, it's like a, it is like a marathon, it's like even though I might not mention something, me leaving something else could actually lead to other ideas uh, or action being made at a faster rate than if I just set everything, which is part of the reason I don't do things like just 
spent all my time reading all of the material I had before was because everything I read, like with the book, and all of the research and everything, led to this. So, I would think it would be a better use of your time to focus on the things I'm saying now than what I said before, even if you do learn from the things I said before. As the person who came up with it and wrote it, that I would encourage you to focus more on the ideas I'm saying now. So, like, I wrote that entire 250 page book to lead to the idea of the creation of the videos I'm making now. Hence, so that's how researching works is that you can study for years to find out something that you could have accidentally easily accidentally done, but you didn't notice the correlation yet, so you didn't. But now you deliberately do it, and it could be something as easy as like buying chunga. It's like, it's a rare material, it's like, why wouldn't you buy chunga? Some people might do it accidentally, but, and no, it has some healing properties, but they don't deliberately buy it for physical manifestation of the mind or meta and metaphysics it's like it's usually more vague like they just want think it looks pretty or something but that's why you have to think is that um, you can't rely on nature anymore it's too corrupt so what we consider to be instinct no longer is good I think we could consider instinct to be evil. If that makes even animals and some people, or some animals and some people seem better when you realize that I'm realizing animals make more choices than I would have thought, is that animals aren't just pure instincts. They do make choices and that's how I found with these viruses that there is an element of choice to it. That's why they're so intelligent, is that they can make choices, is that they actually do have what, like the viruses have something that can be studied in artificial intelligence with AI, is that they are like machines, but they still make choices. And if you found a way to hijack that, which I think is what Christianity, its invention was for, was to hijack the psychology of these diseases so that they don't do anything anymore because they're too in conflicted with their own existence. And I'm realizing the importance of religion in warding off diseases, but religion most, there are more technically religious people now because there are more people than there have ever been on the earth now with almost 8 billion people. But most of them are complacent about religion. So atheism is becoming very common today. But at the same time, many people who I've seen that are atheists refer to the God not as not, not necessarily the God itself, but the religion. And they, the, what I notice, what they do is that they imply that the God and the religion are the same thing. And religion is a human invention to understand God. Well, it was, I say human invention, assuming like Jesus and the disciples who worked for God to act as mediums for God, meaning they would count what I would say as the humans inventing it. Like, Abraham followed God without religion. Religion did not exist at that time, at least in terms of the real living God. But he didn't need religion, he just listened anyways. And people, even atheists, can be like that is that you can't actually abide to God without being religious. And even though religion does teach many things that, uh, that would are much more metaphysical,
physically advance than someone figuring out these things on their own. It isn't a necessity if religion is orchestrated by people who don't even have a relationship with the living God, like the Pharisees in the Bible. So it's like now the religious teachers I've seen today, they don't acknowledge this old God or the living God who I've conversed with and says is ignored by them. And because of that, I've heard God say that I would rather be friends with an atheist than a hypocritical Christian. And it's sad. And I found that the people who I get along with are people who I could technically convert, but aren't already Christian. Because it's harder to shake off the ideas of the corruption in the church than it is to start with someone new. And that's also with the same reason I would teach children. It's that children don't have the wrong ideas of modern science that in the realization of metaphysics, which still happens today with atheism, and it's a uh, And I know some of the things I might say conflict with one another, but I'm not writing any of this down or anything. I don't take notes at all. And uh, I just think about it. And uh, teaching the children is important because they, this is the first time they see this. So they will be unique in that this is their immediate perception of the world. And because of that, it would be more efficient, I think, to teach this to a child than an adult who has spent years and years already studying physics or religion or whatever. And so that's why I think many people who typically go into physics eventually go into teaching. Is that it naturally happens because they recognize that they could keep researching and doing this on their own. But if they gave this task to other people by teaching them, it would be more efficient for the entirety of mankind, I think. For everyone to be an independent researcher and develop that by learning through like a master and apprentice relationship rather than being spoon-fed information. Because if you don't think about what you learn, then I think what you learn has no meaning at all. You need to think about it. And even if that means sitting and doing nothing. Physically. And that's why the metaphysical realm is so important, is that our morality and thought and creation is rooted in the metaphysical realm but it only exists in the physical realm as a choice, not an instinct. So, I'm going to include a picture of, uh, let's this. I have these dried pumpkins that, uh, my mom broke this one. It's a dried pumpkin. I like pumpkins a lot. It's one of the foods that I actually... I found that vine-grown foods seem to be tolerant and somehow avoiding the corruption in the clay. So like pumpkin squash, uh, also corn. So like field-grown foods. So like when you imagine the four horsemen of the apocalypse with being grim reapers, is that that's the imagery I had in my mind of like if they imagine them as farmers is that like uh, what foods would they grow and reap that could actually be eaten of like imagining a reaper and I found that those same foods are the foods that seem to be free of this corruption so like in farms of like pumpkins and squash and uh, maybe watermelons, I'm not sure. I, 
I got a watermelon cake on my birthday, and I had an allergic reaction to it, so I didn't eat anything at all. And uh, when I was like 19, I don't know why that happened, because I ate it later, and it was fun. Is, uh, but, like, pumpkin, squash, corn, Ezekiel bread, I found to be the healthiest food I could find, like, to eat. Has every essential amino acid, and a very high absorption rate in protein. And it's also from the Bible, too. And that's the food that I've eaten consistently as my main uh, food. Like every meal I eat pieces of Ezekiel bread. And it has uh, like yeah, the five ingredients of rain uh oats and melons. Uh, I don't know if I can say it if you but uh Also, it's low sodium to the add sodium to food to uh, make it last longer. But Ezekiel bread is so organic that I literally had a bag of it uh, just in the pantry, and it went moldy after a couple days. I, it, it's so such a nutrient rich food that mold and fungi will target it uh, very aggressively so we have, I have to put it in the freezer and it will be as solid as like a rock when I take it out and it will thaw to like a normal texture in like 20 minutes five ingredients of Ezekiel bread I also found that for health, I found what the Amish, like their idea of health, you get sick and you just take like flat seed oil or something where it clears out your intestinal tract, it's a laxative, maybe flat seed, what is it, uh, Amish, it's a, uh, Is it not Amish oil? My, there's a local farmer who's a nurse and he would go to treat people from Amish communities because they don't, all they do for practically any disease is take this oil that is a laxative and clears them out. Because they think that life is just a cure out. Uh, purge the impurities in the body. And they think if this doesn't work, then there's nothing we can do. And there are many Amish people that he actually saves by doing that. And he's a farmer, but I don't buy stuff from him because I, I'm not. He has a little farmer show. Because I'm not sure specifically about like how he farms it, but I still do respect what he does. It's a... Uh, I forgot what it was. It's a... Uh, Foxy oil or something. It's a... Uh, I think so. It's a... Uh, also, it, if it is flaxseed oil, that has a high amount of omega-3s in it, which I do know that, and then, which is also found in fish oil. And, uh, let's see. Amish is, uh, that's the point of that. Uh, it's kind of funny. I can see the black and white footage of me in my mind, of my 
face, even though I haven't posted or edited this video yet. That's what's weird about this. It's like time travel, except I can actually see myself in the future, or from the future. Is that so the point of the Amish club was that, uh, well, one, they don't use electricity, is one thing. Is that it's like very rarely in Amish communities they'll allow someone that allow a uh, like village phone, so like one phone in the entire community. And that's the phone that some communities would use to call up and to help them. You're going to You want this
create a purple liquid with it. And that's the liquid I found that the virus didn't seem to crave for some reason. It's this mixture of tree bark and mushrooms. Like, they just love it. And I could tell because it's like, I could feel the energy of excitement of whatever being this was and having a large supply of this. And it felt like this was disgusting. So when I said did this, I let it go on for like a day of not doing anything, but like pretending like I was going to actually make plans to do it. And it started to rapidly get more and more extreme. And it got into uh, using agar uh, test cylinders to clone mushrooms and I had the idea that if I could clone these mushrooms and depend on them as a source of energy then uh, it could change my DNA to be so similar to different times of me in the past that I could connect to my different timelines through my DNA to develop immortality. And that's the idea that was merging in my head that didn't necessarily feel like mine when I was doing this mushroom form. And I noticed how all of this equipment had sterilized uh, it was very sterilized, so it would kill off good gut bacteria. And I know that the lack of good gut bacteria can lead to stomach damage, which I already have stomach problems and stomach damage from the past. So I knew I'm not even going to risk doing this. And it's like, I felt the compulsion from whatever force this was of getting a lab coat, getting these sterilized uh, cloning materials for these mushrooms. And it seems like it's almost like a clone army in some way, which is also in Star Wars. But there's, uh, there's uh, this sci-fi fantasy movie thing, which is in the same universe as the Mandalorian, which I have the clip of. Yeah, there's a, I can have clips of it later. Um, but the clone army turned against the Jedi, who are like these supposed to be peaceful peacekeepers, but kind of like Christians or monks, whatever. But they're also warriors, and the clones turned against them through a mass betrayal by the Emperor. And uh, killed all of the, um, Jedi, or most of them, except the ones who escaped. But also that the clones, the base model they used, was Jango Fett. So Jango Fett was cloned at a, this water, like this faci lab facility in water, uh, by these beings that looked like Martians, would you imagine, with very long necks. And they were cloned at these facilities, and she was cloned at these facilities, this facility. And uh, the only thing she asked for was a son that could age normally because the clones would age twice as fast to speed up their development to be used in war. And Jango Fett was a Mandalorian, which the clip I had of the warrior fighting with the robots, IG-88, is a Mandalorian, but it isn't the same one. It's at a different timeline, and it's a different person. But the Mandalorians, one, they never should take their helmet off. And two, is that uh, they're bounty hunters. It's like they just work for money. And three is that uh, they're assassins. They get hired to kill people. And so they, uh, they have these helmets that are like a 
wide shapes of us. And just like Raytriar and Erizar, and uh, similar to the figure in Tron, and uh, like a Templar in the Crusades, and uh, I used to have, to have bionic clothes, which are these plastic toys that looks like that, which are made of, I think, ABS plastic, and it's the same use in Legos, which are very popular today, by the way. And, uh, let's see, it's a... Uh, he did die by getting his head cut off by a Jedi. And his son, remember I picked up, I'm just talking about whatever now. I hope it's somehow useful. And it's a, uh, his helmet was picked up by his son. And his son actually wore his armor and painted it from blue to green. And his son also had a ship, which was the Slave One ship, which is like this oval shape, long oval shape with this line that is the wings on it. And uh, I can have clips of it later. And he was the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, as Boba Fett is later. And uh, I also noticed that he was devoured by the sand monster that I can include the clip of later that resembled it looked almost exactly like the pink uh, tentacle-like beams I was describing. It's the sand monster that actually ate Boba Fett when he fell in because his jetpack malfunctioned. And supposedly later, he escapes. But these monsters, what they do is that they digest you for thousands of years. So they actually keep your life inside of them for thousands of years to digest you slowly over that time. And that's also the same thing that Perpy Lurpy does. So it's like it's all correlated. And uh, there seems to be like this one lingering storyline that all of these different areas of fiction are based off of. And, um, uh, feels like that's relevant. Is, uh, also with the, uh, Reaper shape with the sickle, which is also, uh, Reminiscent of like the Rune Reaper. I imagine the sickle with when I think of the Grim Reaper is that when you have a mirror image of um what is it? So like DNA what I'm finding based on it has properties similar to mirroring and that something can clone itself when it can physically merge with itself. And that's what cloning is. It's like you get half of something and it can internalize itself so that it inverts its atomic states so that it actually clones itself. So in that cloning process, you would only have half of something. So what I mean is that as a it's a the sickle seems like half of something and it's like it seemed like a ring with a line here and here, which coincidentally or not, I have a picture that looks just like that, which is from Vault 111, which is uh, 
It's this, uh, it's based off of the 19, the early 1900s with, like, Las Vegas, and, uh, it's this apocalyptic game where there's World War Three and there's this radioactive wasteland that is America now, but it's still reminiscent of, uh, early 1900s culture, or maybe, like, 1950 or 40s, 30s, whatever, culture, and I could include clips of it later. There's this song called Mom Have Sky that was for a long period of time my favorite song.